Hello. So today I thought we'd have a quick play with some gel medium and some distressing. This isn't a new technique. Um, colouring gel medium has been around for years. But I just thought I could show you how I use it in some of my projects. I'm going to do use one of these postcard size pieces of watercolour card. It's 350 GSM, so it's a, a nice weight. I've got a couple of spatulas, some deco art, heavy gel medium, which I like. This is the gloss, um, but I think you can get the matte as well. Vintage photo distress ink, uh, just because I like a, a vintage look to my projects. I've also got, let's see, ground espresso and walnut stain in the minis, which I might use later on, and a spray bottle. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to move those over there, get some of my distress ink, squidge quite a lot onto my glass mat. So I've got a reasonable amount on there. You could use reinkers, but just be aware you don't need much with a reinker. So then I'm going to get a good amount of my vintage photo mixed in with my gel medium. A good amount of gel medium, and I just mix it in. At this stage, it's opaque, but it goes more translucent when it dries. Just put the top on that. Now, it is a little messy, is this, but I'm going to apply just gently some of the gel medium with my palette knife spatula. And I want some areas where there isn't any of the gel medium and quite a few areas where there is. I tend to concentrate around the corners and de definitely get little bits on the corners. Now you can see where I've got more, a thicker layer of the gel medium, it's darker. So what I'm also going to do is I'm going to pop it through a stencil. This is still wet so it, it may mark it but you'll get the idea. So I'm just going to pop this stencil on here. Just going across that corner I think. And then and get hold of it. Lift it off. You see it's quite a lot darker. Now I've got some black ink on here from before and it's actually picked a little bit of the black ink up but that's fine, I don't mind that. Just clean that bit up and then it won't get everywhere. It's going to give my stencil a wipe because it does tend to, because it's quite fluid, it does tend to go underneath the stencil if you're not careful. Possibly have another little bit just across here. So again, hold your stencil down. Small stencils are not the easiest to pick up. Clean up again. As I say, it's a little bit messy. Alright, put my stencil away to dry. And because I've got a little bit left, I'm going to very, very carefully just go around some of the edges as well and add a little bit more to just darken the edges a little bit more. And where I've got 
got it through the stencil. There we are. Now this, I'm going to not waste this. I'm going to gather this up. I've got another one of my little purse cards. And I'm going to just randomly smear it across for a different look. So you can see I've got areas where there's not so much and areas where there's quite a bit. A little bit on the corners. I'll try not to waste out supplies. That's quite a bit. Being the frugal Yorkshire girl, I don't like to waste things. So I've got that looks a little bit messy at the moment, but it is just a background. So remember to put your spatulas or your palette knife straight in water because once this sticks, you can't get it off. I'm just going to move that first postcard out of the way while I clean up my glass mat because the same reason you can get it off your glass mat but it's a little bit more difficult. So I'll bring this one back in and I've just got some, um, this is bubble wrap that something was delivered in, it's an envelope. And you can see I've used it for gel printing quite a bit. So if I just fold it over and then press it into my gel medium on my postcard I get some lovely indentations and some marks so once that dries that'll look quite nice for the start of the background so what I'll do now I'll wait for these to dry or I'll heat dry them. If you heat dry them you get a little bit of a bubbling effect which is really nice. So I'll probably do that and then we'll come back and finish these two postcard backgrounds off and uh, then you can see where we go from here. Right, so we're here, back here with these which are dry. Just be aware I heat dried these and the bubbling me leaves a lovely effect. I dried them quite intensely with my heat tool and they bubble and it gives a sort of a crackly effect to the top and I really like this so I tend to always heat dry it. If you don't want the crackly effect, if you want a smooth effect just dr let it dry naturally, naturally overnight. This one there's a little bit of bubbling but not so much because it wasn't quite as thick wasn't this but you can see it's it's held the shape of the bubble wrap um, so we'll work on these a little bit more because they are just the beginnings of backgrounds I'll set them aside for a second and I'm going to get some vintage photo again onto my glass mat but I'm going to mix it with a little bit of ground espresso as well just to give it a bit more darkness. So I've got both on my glass mat and then I'm just going to spritz them with quite a lot of water. I'm going to go in and just press my card down randomly and move it about. That spreads the ink, moves the ink, but it also makes it so hopefully the card will pick up different colours in different places. I've got some onto the card, some not. So I'm going to go with a bit more water because it needs to be a bit more fluid to pick up a bit more. I always cover the back of my postcards later anyway because they're always messy and got fingerprints and everything. So 
So you can see we're picking up quite a lot of colour. So I can spread it with your finger if you want. I always end up with grungy hands anyway. Alright, so that's the first one, which won't look anything at the moment. When it's dried it'll look better. This one, I'll dab again. And we'll get bits into different areas. So the watercolour card will pick up the distress ink, hopefully. Sometimes you do have to just swirl it around because the matte medium, no, the gel medium does actually resist the ink and it, it because it's dimensional you have to press your card into it to get the ink everywhere. I don't mind if there's odd little bits that haven't any colour. And as I say, you can always move it around with your fingers if you want. Yeah, I quite like the fact that there's some white. Right, I have a bit of spare paper to pick up the ink so it isn't wasted. But I could equally put a journal page on top of here to pick the ink up. Most of the ink picked up. Let's wipe this down to make it a bit cleaner and then we'll see where we are. Alright, so you can see we've got different colours. We've still got some ink sitting on the top. Now that ink will sit on the top and won't dry properly. If it does, it'll just wipe off because the gel medium acts as a resist. It's a bit like gesso, it can act as a resist as well as adding texture. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press one of my other postcards on the top to pick up some of the spare ink. Again, on the top. bit of ink on there which is the start of a background. Now also what I'm going to do is just wipe it over gently with a baby wipe. There we are. That will just get the ink from the top of the gel medium. So you can see we've got completely different backgrounds now. Let's see if we can just get a bit more of that. I think I'll ink is off. Let me just try to do it with a dry one and then we'll know. And we know all the wet inks off there. That's it. So you can see we've got a little bit of white area here and there, which I don't mind. We've got the coloured gel medium nice and dark in the corners and around the edges, but then also a mid-tone here, which has resisted the distress ink, which has been absorbed in, in between. Um, if I wanted it darker, I could go with just a little bit more ground espresso or even black, which would then add a little bit more depth, which I think I possibly might. I think I want a little bit more depth. But what you can also do is get a sponge. Let's see if I can find a clean one. This one's been used for um, vintage photos, so Ground Espresso will be okay on it. So I'm just going to pick a little bit up and just go round the edges so that it, it picks up any bits, any little bits where the 
gel medium, colour gel medium has left gaps because then it will go on to the untreated bits and add a little bit more depth because I quite like it a little bit darker and where you've got it on top of the gel medium and you know it's not going to stop there you can just wipe it off with a, a damp cloth again so that's got a bit more depth again We'll do the same with this one. I'm going to leave that white bit because I quite like the white bit. There we are. And again we'll wipe off the excess because the gel medium acts as a resist. So there we are. So we've got a little bit more depth now. If I was going to stamp onto this, I'll just dry it with a dry cloth, I would have to use stays on because I don't think anything else would stamp onto here. But as you can see, we've got a nice lot of visual texture. And what I'm going to do now choose my colour. Let's see, what shall we have? I'll find my copper. I think we'll have a... just rooting through my waxes. Ah yes, copper I think might be quite nice. I've just got some gilding wax. Might do a combination of copper and gold. I'll try a copper first. Just put a bit on my finger. and just rub it over the gel medium and it will pick up some of the the wax and it'll also highlight any texture on the gel medium as well I think I need something a little bit stronger the copper's not showing up as well we might go to a contrast and go to silver. So you can always mix the colours of your gilding wax. You don't have to stick. There we are. You don't have to stick with the just one colour. You can overlap them. So I'll just go around the edges. And you can see it's picking up the texture in the gel medium, which is really nice. So on that corner it's particularly nice. We've got different levels of the, I don't know if you can see, of the gel medium. I think with gilding wax is to build it up gradually, not go for one fell swoop. Now, I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully you can, and it's picked up all the little bubbles in the gel medium. So it highlights the texture in the gel medium. I'll do the same with this one. bits of the texture across there and round the edges round the edges here now 
almost like to get a little bit of gilding wax around the edges so it looks as if it frames the piece. There we are, so I think we've picked all the texture up in that one. So again that gives it just another level. And then we can stamp with stays on onto the top of those and work them some more into a, a proper background. So I hope that gives you an idea how to use gel medium with some of your distress inks. Right, so you can see I've started work on some of these, a couple of these, with um, some stamps and the black stays on solvent ink pad, uh, the jet black which I rather like. Uh, this is a indigo blue stamp which is like ink splatters which I've used across here but uh, this is another indigo blue stamp which I absolutely love and I use it a lot for going around the edges because it brings the edges in uh, so I've used that one this one I think I'll leave it at that until I decide what the focal area is going to be uh, but you can hopefully see there's lots of texture, visual texture and the the silver gilding wax where the gel medium's bubbled um, so that's a nice start to a background this one I've just gone around the edges with this stamp randomly and brought it in some places I also think I'm going to add some of these numbers, this is another indigo blue stamp which I absolutely love and I like to just have a thing about numbers and I like to just bring them in from a corner just sort of randomly like this mostly opposite corners I tend to work on just to give more interest I'll put a little bit up there a little bit there when you're using um, stays on always clean your stamps I'll clean this one properly but I'll just give it a wipe with a baby wipe for now but always clean your stamps because uh, it does affect your stamps so that's getting there we've got a lot more interest now I've got this little darber as well and I'm just going to bring some of the black in the edges as well I think I want a bit more depth around the edges so I'm just going to bring that in and I'm also very very gently going to just go across some of my raised stencil work just in the corners just to give it some depth it'll just grunge it up a little bit I don't want to cover them all just some so I'm just doing it very, very gently and building it up. I must admit this uh, gel medium around the edges is starting to look like tar, which is rather nice. And I know that I'm covering some of my gilding wax up. But that doesn't matter. This media is all about the layers. So that's looking a lot more interesting now and a lot more promising. So I'm going to leave that one as is and then just put a focal point on. This one I think needs a little bit more work. It maybe just needs edging in the black just to bring it in a little bit. Yeah, that will that improves it quite a lot. So I hope you give this a go and obviously you can use whichever colours of distress inks you have or is your favourite. I'm a vintage girl so I tend to use vintage photo a lot. Um, but obviously as I say you could use whatever you wanted, whichever colour you wanted. <laughs> 